What's up, tubers? Tio here, Simplistic Fishing, back at you tonight for another lake breakdown. This time we're starting a new lake. That's right, you spoke and I listened. You said you wanted Stillhouse Hollow Reservoir, and that's what we're going to deliver tonight. We've got lots of good stuff that I was able to find on Google Earth. Maybe not as much stuff on Google Earth as I was able to find actually on Contours on this mat, on this lake uh, via the mobile app for Navionics. So got a really good little mixture here. This thing has lots and lots of and lots of grass, has large mouth, has small mouth, looks super cool, maybe a good place to go and stay in belt and fish both these lakes, and then maybe sneak up to Waco as you're going back up to DFW or moving back up north. I don't know. All these lakes looks cool. Let's go and let's jump into Stillhouse Hollow. Here we go. Like we always do before we jump into the actual lake breakdown, we always go out to the Texas Park and Wildlife page, check out the lake, kind of see what it has to offer, where it's located, just some details about the lake, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and look at this one. This is Stillhouse Hollow Reservoir. Its location is five miles west of Belton off of US 190. Surface acres is actually fairly small, 6,429 acres. Maximum depth, though, is very deep, 107 feet deep, and it was impounded in 1968. The fluctuation on this lake, and you heard me talk about it in the introduction, um, it really doesn't fluctuate that much. So fluctuation is about three to four feet. So we didn't find as much on Google Earth as we did actually more from an offshore standpoint. So um, something to kind of think about as you're as you're watching the uh, the breakdowns the clarity in this lake you can tell there's some grass or some type of hydrilla or something like that in the lake it's very very clear um so that's a you know that's definitely a change from all the different lakes we have here in texas i don't i think belton's fairly clear as well but when you get up here around dfw area you know or east texas lake fork all those <clears throat> we are far from very clear water so it would be a different fishing experience for sure if you lived up here in the dfw area all right so let's keep on going down aquatic vegetation uh, i told you it looked like there was grass or hydrilla in there it's definitely hydrilla and looks like there's a lot of it so if you're like me i love hydrilla if i can find lakes that have hydrilla i'm there i love it it's ton fun uh, fun to fish around tons of fun so uh, just definitely this is going to be a lake that i would put at the top of my list to uh, to go check out so predominant fish species on this lake largemouth bass smallmouth bass channel flathead catfish crappie and white bass and then when you go and look at the lake records pretty impressive uh large mouth is 13 pounds caught it on a rattle trap and that was actually in 2019 so it was nice to see that this lake has a little bit more updated or uh, i guess the bigger fish are caught more recently so 2019 is pretty cool and then you also have a small mouth look at this 6.75 that was caught back in 93 so not sure if they're still in there i'm sure they are with this lake being so deep but 6.75 that's a big old small mouth so anyways those are the two uh large you know records for the bass let's go ahead and dig a little bit more in here as far as um angling opportunities you've got largemouth bass smallmouth bass i talked about that you've got the catfish here's the crappie the white bass and the sunfish so it says largemouth bass and smallmouth bass is good from what I've heard, just from local people and people talking to me about this lake and things like that, I, I'm going to put it more towards the excellent side. I heard this is a really fun lake to fish, so definitely go check this one out. Um, and then you can see here, it just talks about being extremely clear and deep. There were some GPS coordinates of some, um, some crappie brush piles and things like that. Um, I'm not even sure what we call what I'm trying to say fish attractors. Um, so there were some fish attractors on here. So let's go ahead and move on down here to Stillhouse Hollow. And we'll just look at the map. I've imported these into the waypoints. So we have them, but there's really four of them. You've got two over here by this bridge, probably like crappie condos. Let's see what they say. Stackable structures, PVC, each attractor group consists of five rectangular PVC structures three to six foot in size, a 15 foot ring of 10 fishy, fishy ding steak bed structures. I don't even know if I said that right. 
and those depths are from 18 to 28 feet. So you've got some pretty good structure that they put in there for you guys to go check out. So anyways, go check those out, especially you crappie guys. You guys will love fishing around that stuff. And if you've heard me talk about it before, even though the crappie guys go there, that doesn't mean the bass guys can't go there either. The bass love to eat the crappie, so it's a great place to go and try to find a giant. Um, we look here at tips and tactics. Largemouth bass fishing is best during the spring and fall. That's what they always say. Uh, smallmouth can be good year round, so that's cool. And it looks like you guys that want to do white bass, is, uh, they got some white bass in this lake as well. All right, so that pretty much wraps us up for Stillhouse Hollow Reservoir as far as the Texas Park and Fishing, Texas Park and Wildlife having a hard time talking fishing page. So let's go ahead and switch over now and let's jump into Google Earth, and see what we can find. All right, well, let's jump into Google Earth here and see what we found out on this lake. Lots of good stuff to, uh, to take a look at. First off, I just want to point out, if you look over here on the left-hand side, you'll see a bunch of different lakes. Uh, we've got lakes across almost almost all the lakes in Texas. We're, we're only short about, I think, 20 or so lakes. We're working on those right now. So we're up to about 80 different lakes out on the site. We've also got lakes out in Oklahoma, Mississippi, Louisiana, and then I did a few up in uh, Wisconsin and Michigan as well. So starting to really spread out. Uh, I have a gentleman named David that's working with me on the lake breakdowns as well, which is really helping ramp up the, the time that it's taken us to uh, to put these out to market. So go check us out, simplisticfishing.com. You can pick up all these waypoints, put them on an SD card, import them into your graph. It'll change the way you fish. It'll speed up the way you fish because you'll be able to really focus on the actual things that the fish are gonna be attracted to. So let's go ahead and talk about those real quick. And if you look over here on the left-hand side, I've got Stillhouse Hollow over here. I've got this broken down by a couple different categories. Um, first is going to be different channels and ditches that are out there within the lakes. You can see here these green marks are all the channels and ditches that we've marked in the lake. And if you've ever watched any of my lake breakdown videos, I apologize for keep uh, for repeating myself, but these are really critical when it comes to uh, comes to fishing, especially if you're doing the type of fishing where you need to focus on staying in the creek channels. Um, or if you want to focus on where the big bends are in the creek channels and things like that, like right here, a really good bend here, a really good bend here. Those are things that are going to be key when it comes to finding fish. Um, we've also got cover and structure. So lots of different laydowns. We've got some ledges. We've got some road beds. We've got all kinds of different stuff. So lots of different cover and structure to take a look at. We've also got the most important thing, I think, uh, for this lake, and that's going to be the offshore hotspots. So these are all the different spots that we found based on looking at the contour map and then uh, looking for different types of things that we know fish are related to. So we've got all those different spots marked out here on the lake. Obviously, we, wouldn't, we won't be able to mark every single offshore hotspot that's available on this lake, but these are the, uh, the spots where we really feel confident that you're going to be able to find some fish in these areas. Maybe not all of the time, but certain times of the year, these are going to be pretty good areas, high probability areas to find fish. You're also going to see a lot of ramps out here. Uh, not not too, not a lot, really. There's only five, I think. One, two, three. Actually, there's more than five. Two, four. There's six of them. So six different ramps out here that you can check out. Uh, fishing around the ramps, you know, you hear me talk about that a lot. Definitely want to check it out. I mean, especially with only being six ramps, you could pretty much hit them all. Uh, the challenge is just which ones are busy and which ones aren't. Uh, if you can hit the ones that aren't as busy, those are probably going to be the ones you're going to find fish on, but they'll be on the busy ones too. Um, I have no idea why, but they love those boat ramps. Well, I know why they like the boat ramps. I don't know why they like the busy boat ramps, um, but they are definitely around the boat ramps, so make sure to check those out. Also, lots of rock on this lake, obviously being that it's more of a canyon type uh, lake, but what I did was I did mark out different um, areas where you could see different types of rock formations. So any type of of really good rock formations to fish around. Went ahead and marked all those for you. And then we've also got the Texas Park and Wildlife fish attractors that we just talked about. And these are those that are right here. So let's go ahead. Now that we've spent the first 10 minutes talking about all this stuff, let's jump in and let's actually break down this lake. So we always start at the dam. So we're gonna start here. We work our way either east or north, and then we circle back around. So we're not gonna do anything different on this one. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take off the offshore hotspots so that way they don't uh, confuse us here while we're doing the breakdown. And what we're going to do is once we get done with the Google Earth breakdowns, I'll come back, I'll switch it over to my phone. We'll look at it on Navionics mobile uh, boating app, and we will show you guys why those points are interesting to us. All right, so let's go ahead and start here down at the dam. Obviously, best place to, you know, to fish 
on most lakes, or maybe not best place to fish, but a place that you can go and find fish pretty consistently, obviously, is the dam. So this dam has some pretty good riprap on it, so you could definitely check that out. You've also got some pretty good rock that's down in here. Um, so if you look right in here, you got a little like cut in right here, and it looks like you got an outcropping of rock right there. So let's, before I do that, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, let's go up here and let's change the imagery back and let's see how far we can get this thing to come back. You can see all of the uh, hydrilla and stuff throughout the uh, the water on some of these areas. There's some pretty good rock. There's probably going to be our best ones 2017. But let's go back and just see if there's anything. Oh, here we go. 2015 looks even better. So we'll probably stick with 2015 or 2014. 2012 is about the same. Let's go with 2015. It's a little bit of a bright image, so we may have to switch back and forth. But let's go with that one to start with. You can obviously see why I marked this rock now. Now, before, it looked like it was just a little cut in, right, in 2022, the image that we had there. But if you look closer, you've got some really good boulders that are right here. And possibly, yeah, there's another good boulder there. And look at the shade that that one's creating. So you know if that's from a Google Earth image, from a satellite image, that's going to be some pretty good boulders there to check out. All right, so we're going to keep moving up. And as we move a little bit further up here, when you get up here, there's some tires up here, a big old tire reef. But the problem is the tire reef's not that far off of the land. Um, so if I bring this up to 2022, you're not too far off the land there. So definitely check that out. Let's see if I can get a better image here for you. Those tires are going to be right here. So right there in that area, going to be a really good area to find some fish. The bass love that stuff. The crappie love that stuff. Um, just lots of, you can see them there again, that image in August of 2015. Um, but then you can really see it really well in February 2015. So there's the tires. And then if we move on up, there's a pretty good little, um, I don't know if this is just a giant laydown or if this is a giant rock. Because if you notice there, it's got some pretty good shade that's around it. But I can definitely see something hanging around that. You've also got a really good point that's out here. This little point just kind of creeps out. And if you look, it's got some hard stuff on it that could be, uh, rock. It could just be some shell that's collecting there. You never know, but that's definitely going to be a good point to take a look at. And then if you look back in here in this little cove back here, you've also got some pretty heavy duty rock back in here, like a nice little rock pile. Again, if the water's up, that's going to look a lot different. And then moving up here, you've got a couple different areas where you've just got some bigger rocks where there's not a lot going on, but just this little area in here has just enough chunky rocks for them to just kind of roam around. So maybe go check that out and just see what you can find there. As we move a little bit further up here, uh, we've also got um, a little bend that happens right here. So if you look, there's a creek back here somewhere. Um, it's kind of hard to see where the creek channel is. I didn't really mark the creek channel for you, but you can tell that it comes through here somewhere and jumps out right here. And right in here, it really starts to get defined. And you notice this really big turn right here. And see that ledge that's right there? This is a primary, a good area, a good hotspot area for them to hang out in. So definitely go check that out as well. But as we get up in here, we got, of course, you know, quite a bit of rock on this lake just randomly throughout. On the other side, we're going to see more rock, but we've got some laydowns here. We got some more rock right up in here. Pretty decent little creek channel in here that you could get up in here and fish, especially if they were pushing bait way back in these creek channels. And then right here, you've got a really good creek channel swing. You can see it's creating a ledge right here right where I put C swing at uh, for the channel swing. So definitely go check that out. Then as we come over here, we've got some more tires that are way back in here. I don't know if you'd even get back in here. It'd have to be like springtime or something, but there's a tire back there, but pretty decent little channel here. It's not that well cut out, um, but it does kind of swing up against the bank right here. So maybe this part of the bank line would be good. And then definitely up here, you can see where it's digging it out right up in here. So this whole area right in here has a really good bend, a really good creek channel swing, whatever you want to call it, but definitely right in there is going to be more of your primary spot for that area. As we move back in here, just a couple of things I wanted you guys to check. I don't know if these are fish attractors or what they are, but if you look really closely, see if I'll, I'll even zoom in for you guys, you can see some debris right in here. And then right here, it's like it looks like either a giant rock, a huge refrigerator. <laughs> I have no idea what it is, but check it because I can definitely see some fish hanging around that, especially being really close to that secondary point that's right there. All right, so moving on down here, you got some big ramps. Obviously, you got the Stillhouse Hollow Marina, so you could fish around the marina. Marinas are always good to fish around. But then if you look right outside of the ramps right here, I don't know if this is an old boat ramp 
maybe, or what the heck is going on, but you've got some really good slabs over here. I don't know if this is their fishing platform or what this is, but right in here, I could see that having, having some potential. Even right there, there's like a wall or something right there. Not sure what's going on in this area, but I could see this area being good, especially being close to that marina. So you think about tournaments and stuff like that. They probably have their tournaments here and they're releasing the fish. That's going to be a good place for those release fish to collect, um, especially coming out of the tournaments. So definitely go check that out. Then you've also got some additional rock that's out here. Um, you can barely see it, but you can see right here, there's a boulder right underneath where I put my flag at. So a really big boulder right in here. You can see there's some bigger boulders up in here too. So if the water got up, these come in play as well. Um, and then as we move <clears throat> a little bit further over here, not too much going on in this bank line that I found, but did find a little bit of rock back in here. And you'll see it as I zoom in. So pretty much you've got this sandy area, right? Not a lot going on, but right here, there's something going on right here. And again, that's a high percentage spot because it's the only hard spot that's in this whole area. So I can see them getting on there for sure. You've also got some additional little rock. I don't know if this is like a, a ridge that's coming over that's under the water or what it is, but right in here is another hard spot. And then right here almost looks like a creek channel swing because you, you pretty much you can see it. It breaks down quite a bit. Um, so there's definitely got to be it's a pretty good ledge or something right in that area when the water comes up. So again, if I bring the water up <clears throat> 2022, that ledge is completely underwater. So that ledge is somewhere right in here. That rock's right in there. We talked about that marina earlier, those slabs by the marina. Now it looks totally different. So you'd have no idea that these were there. If you were just putting in here, there's a wall that's right here. You can kind of see it, but those slabs are way out here. And that's why I think that's going to be a really good area. Uh, to find some fish. Now, obviously, if there's people fishing off that pier, just stay away from it uh, or stay further back. You know, just respect the guys that uh, that don't have the boats, man, because we can go anywhere we want. But that's definitely going to be a good spot. All right. So <clears throat> let's take this back to 2015. We're going to try to get this part of this side of the lake done and we'll we'll finish on this side and then we'll we'll do the next video uh, moving on down. But let's talk about some other stuff. There's that rock we talked about. Now we're going to go out here to the main point and we get out here off the main point. There's a couple different hard spots. There's one right here and there's one right here. Now, depending on if there's, if there's hydrilla in this area, that could change the whole thing. You might not be able to get there, but, but if you can, that spot of the, of the point right there is going to be a really good area to take a look at. You've also got some more laydowns that go on back in here. There's a big one there, another one there, not too much going on in here, but again, you know, it's totally different when you have hydrilla. So if hydrilla comes in and you got hydrilla off this point, uh, that rocky spot might not actually have hydrilla on it. Maybe the hydrilla can't grow in that area or something. So that could be a little hole in the hydrilla. Um, or if there is hydrilla, just get out on the outside edges of the hydrilla and fish the outside edges of it. Let's actually look at what we're talking about hydrilla. Let's just see if there's any in here that we can see on the, uh, the imagery. I don't see any right now. It's a little bit back in here. So maybe there's not too much off that point, but if there is, you know, definitely take that in consideration. All right, so let's keep moving down. When you come over here off of this point, this point comes out really far. So obviously those are those are primo points to fish, especially in the fall time. Um, so you definitely want to check this out. And then it looks like there's rock on the top of it right in here. Notice how the color gets a lot different. Also right in here, there's something going on right in here as well. I don't know if that's a little mini rock pile or what that is, but scan that entire tip of that point and I think you're going to find some good stuff in there. Now if you look really closely it does look like there could be some potential hydrilla in here as well so it could be hard to get up in there but if you can get up in there definitely take a look at it. All right and then as we go over here we've got some pretty good road beds that go through here. Now obviously this road bed's probably way over here too and we'll probably be able to see it uh, on the Navionics but as far as Google Earth what I could find was I marked for you. I marked a little road bed that goes right through here. There's some rock right here there's rock out here off the edge at this point, right in here. So I really like this spot right in here where this roadbed comes over and swings up against this, this, uh, this little hump that's right in here. This whole area right in here, I can see being a pretty good area to take a look at. All right, so let's keep moving. Also wanted you guys to check some stuff here. Don't know what that is. That's a big lay down or big rock or what it is, but check that out. And then notice as you get further off this little sandy point, you start to see a little bit of rock. I don't know if that's rock or 
uh, can't be shells because they're too big, but definitely something going on right in this area. So check out this spot of the point for sure. See what you can find. Also that road bed you got through here. And then you get up here on the edge of this point. Now you got the stick ups and stuff that you can start to fish around, flooded timber, stuff like that, flooded brush. So you've got some more rock right here. That rock's going to be coming right off where that road bed is. So that road bed probably came right through here and it probably runs right along the edge. So you've got a really defined line right there on that uh, underwater brush. So definitely take a look at that right there. All right, so as we get up here, didn't see too much going on this side until we got up a little bit further. Obviously, take a look at these points when they stick out. This, this flooded brush right in here, that could be pretty good. You've also got some laydowns and a road bed that's up here. So if you can get up around all this brush without tearing up your prop and stuff, possibly right up in here could be a good area to take a look at too. Another good, really good defined line that you could fish around right there. All right, let's move on up. I like the other side a little bit better, to be honest with you. We've also got some stuff here to check. You got some big laydowns, and this looks like um, like a big concrete, I don't know, culvert, something like that. I don't know what it is. But again, you got a lot of flooded brush up here, and that stuff's fun to fish around too. Like this little point right here where this brush comes out right in here. We may even mark that as an offshore spot. I don't know, but that could be a pretty good offshore spot right there. Notice how that point comes out. And that brush is right off the tips and just fishing right out here off the tips of this, these little brush that comes off these points can be good right here as well. Things like that. Also out here where this point is, where it comes out, you see this brush way out here, right out in here, primo spot. Uh, again, you got another little spot right in here. I mean, if you got on that where you were, where they were off on the tips of this brush, you got some really good potential areas here. You got one, two, three, four areas that set up perfectly like that. Um, so again, it's just going to depend on the pattern that's going on, what's working on the lake. You've also got some laydowns that are up in here as well. You've got some rock that's back in here. So if you look here, this is this is pretty interesting. I don't know if this was a uh, an old pig pen or what it was, but it's some type of a rock like wall. It goes out here a little bit. You can see it right here really well. So I marked it for you guys. There's a whole bunch of rock right in here. It actually looks like it may even extend back out this way. And then if you look really closely, you got to definitely look, look closely, but right here, follow my little hand, there's a rock fence or a wall or something that's going right down through here. So you could literally follow that with your boat if you wanted to and just see what you can find. But basically you start at that rock and then you're going to have to move over. Just You're going to hit the big rock pile here and then follow it and just follow it all the way down until you hit this other rock area. And then I kind of lose it here, but right in there. You know, that could be a little magical little line that you could just follow all day long and find some fish on. So definitely go look at that. We got a pretty good little ditch here. If you look really closely, there's some vegetation in that ditch as well. But just a, a very not not very obvious uh, ditch that's right here. And you've got two of them. You got one on each side of the point. Now, sometimes they love to relate to those ditches. So it would definitely be worth just going over there and just scanning it and seeing if anything's collecting in those areas. We've also got some rock that's over here, another little ditch that comes down and the washouts probably created the little rock that's right in here. So a little hidden little mini rock pile, I guess you could say. Back here, you've got a pond. So pretty good pond right here. The opening's kind of weak, but what I really like about it is off the edge of it over here, you've got some really good rock. Now that is gonna be a good spot, especially if you bring the water up. So let's go back, let's bring the water up to 2022. That pond is totally submerged. That rock is totally submerged as well. So this right here, as well as the open area and just all around the pond, dam, like all along the sides, the insides and the outsides, those are going to be good places to fish for sure. You've also got a lay down that's back in there. So let's take this back to 2015. So we can see the lay down. The lay down's right there. You can see it now. It's just that little stick that's right there. Looks little, but I'm sure it's a lot bigger than that in person. And then if you get out here off of this point, you've got some really good rock off this point as well. Love this little area right in here. And you've got a lay down over here you could check out too. But really, I would focus a lot right in here. Moving on down, we're getting a little bit closer to the ramp now. Now we're over here by Dana Peak. And you know, I've been going so fast through this. I haven't showed you guys where I'm at. Thought I was going to be able to finish this whole side. Not sure if we're going to be able to, but uh, that's all right. We'll just, we'll, we'll make another video. Maybe we'll have to do three of them. So let's keep moving though. And I'll, I'll pick a good stopping spot here in just a minute. So we got the rock here that lay down there. We've also got some more rock that's right here beside this ramp. So you literally could go on the Dana Peak uh, ramp 
and then stop, throw some wobbleheads, crankbaits, stuff like that right in this area, you might be able to pick some up just really, really quick. But again, there's a fishing pier there, so just be respectful of the, uh, the fishermen that are out there. All right, and then moving on down here, we've also got a couple different areas. We're over here by, oh, we're still at Dana, Dana Peak. Um, but this little spot right here, definitely want you guys to check this. We've got some pretty good rocks starting to starting to form on the lake, but notice how there's a transition area right here. So it gets muddy, a transition area right there, and then it gets muddy. But then this little point that just comes out, I don't know why, but that little point just, it's definitely got my attention. So it, I would go check that one out. Over here, we've got some more rock. Again, it's those, it's those walls. So if you look, you can see it almost makes a perfect turn right there and it goes right through here. So just check them out. They're further off the bank, so they're probably going to be where most people are going to put their boats. But that could be just right where they're sitting. They're just sitting around that rock. So definitely go look at those spots. You've got another spot right in here to check where it just kind of comes out and makes a little ledge right here. It almost looks like a little ditch maybe. And then that little ledge right in there. Those are potential hot spots. Maybe not as good as some of the spots we've talked about, but definitely a spot to take a look at. This little ditch right in here again. Check out these little ditches. They can be magical sometimes. And then we are going to go over here. What we'll do is we'll stop at that fish attractor. That's a good spot to, to stop at. So let's go on up around this main point here. We've also got another little rock pile right in here you can see. Just right in there. Kind of hidden. You wouldn't even know it was there. If the water was up, you'd have no idea it was there. Uh, but nice little rock pile in there. And then again, we've got those... I don't know what they are. They're, they're rock, I'm going to call them rock walls. Um, but right here, we've got another rock wall going on right in this area. And that one's up in, in the middle of a flat, back in the middle of a cove. So that, that one's got some pretty good potential for sure. And then moving over here, just some more things that I wanted you guys to check. I want you to check this point because if you notice, you've got a pretty decent ledge coming off here, but a really good hard spot right here. It looks sandy, but you definitely have some hard spot right in here or some rocks or something like that. So check that one. You got some little vegetation growing off this point. That's cool looking, but you got some timber out here too. So definitely look at that point. That point has some pretty good potential. And then we've got two more spots, three more spots to look at. Pretty good lay down right here. Really good like brush and flooded timber right in here, right off the edge of that point with some pretty good rock and a little cut in. So that uh, looks like it could be a decent spot. And then last but not least, we just got a couple different lay downs that are right over here. So what we'll do is we'll stop at one fish attractor one and when i come back on the next video we'll start there and we'll start working our way back around the lake uh, through the other side see what we can find down there and then uh, we'll follow up with a final video for the navionics mobile app where we look at the contour lines so guys i really appreciate you taking a look at the uh, lake breakdowns please go out and check out our site simplisticfishing.com and don't forget to go check out our sponsors as well habitoutdoors.com they've got lots of good fishing and hunting apparel to check out you can get a 20 percent discount if you just type in simplistic fishing 20 at checkout hey until next time hope you catch a pb take it easy